here I am working on my golf swing. You see my, my whole setup here. Luckily, I know exactly what I need to work on to get better, to get hitting straighter and longer. However, most golfers out there, you don't get a lot of benefit out of either YouTube instruction or in-person instruction. And you will not until you know do these two things. Stay tuned. Hey, this is Steve with HitItLonger.com. I continue my journey to hit the ball longer and straighter than I ever have before, and I hope to show you how to. So two things I'd like to share with you that are gonna help you be able to fix your swing, and it'll be much harder to proceed without knowing these two swings. Uh, for an example, I wanna give you a swing. I'll show it up on the screen here. It's a swing of Darren Clark. Now he's a major champion, uh, Ryder Cup hero, uh, super solid pro golfer for 30 years. Take a look at this swing. It's the first example I want to give you on why it's difficult to fix your swing. Because if you're a pretty good golfer and you've been playing for a long time, you might swing like Darren Clark does. Not the form, bear with me. But watch at the top of the swing, his club face is quite open. Now, obviously, you can play from there. Of course, his, probably his grip is a little on the weak side to get his club face open at the top. Uh, maybe at some point in his career, maybe as a young kid, he was hooking the ball. And so turning his grip to the left, both hands to the left, helped him stop hooking the ball. And then you see coming through impact, his handle goes out and he flips the toe over which would be a hook move and then later on in the follow-through he has a block move where his elbow sticks out to the side and he almost does like a hold on move so it's like open position flip it and then hang on and block it blocking by itself that move with the elbow sticking out would normally be a big slice move so you've got two big slice influences and a big hook influence in the same swing all balancing other out so you can see what i'm getting at here it's this it's this major balancing act and you simply cannot unbalance the equation without a solid long-term plan if you were to tell him to fix any one of those these three things you would throw his equation out of balance and he would struggle for a long time a lot of you are like that too, where you've got all these different little facets, and I get lessons like this all the time, where you can't just fix something and expect the person to get better. It might make them worse because you've unbalanced their equation. I'll give you another example. Here's another idea. Let's say that you block the ball to the right. Most of your shots, open face, high, push, block to the right. Now, if you had a weak grip and you came to me, I'd say, okay, well, why don't we strengthen the grip and we can probably have a little more potential to square the club face this way. And that might be a very elegant solution. However, what if you already had a super strong hook grip and you're still slicing the ball or blocking it, pushing it with an open face to the right? If I were to come in and fix your grip and say, oh, your problem is your grip. Your grip is not good. Let's fix that first. We move you to a neutral grip, and what do you think is going to happen? Your open face slice is going to get double. It's going to be even worse. You're not going to come back to me for lessons because I made you worse without me at least articulating to you that it is just the first phase of a longer term plan. However, what I'm more likely to do as a teacher, if you came to me like that, or the opposite problem, weak grip hooking the ball, I would say, let's go back to strong grip, slicing or blocking the ball. I'd say, well, first of all, let's figure out something else besides the grip. We don't want to take your security blanket away. So let's figure out what else is going on with your swing first. A perfect golf swing with a super strong grip would probably hook the ball. So let's get you hooking the ball 
and then we'll use the grip as our tone down method. And so without knowing these two ideas, you could get very little mileage out of in-person lessons or YouTube instruction. Remember that your swing may not have just one main thing wrong with it. Some people do, but some people have one main thing wrong, and then they've piled lots of compensations on top of it. Their swing is in so many layers that it makes it very difficult to decipher how to move forward. So be very careful first learn what your golf swing what kind of foundation it's on before you go tinkering with things you might find that you just upset the balance so you need to have an understanding of your own swing and its idiosyncrasies and then develop a longer term plan on what direction you'd like to move in uh, with your swing in order to get better for me it's maintaining better posture and making sure that my handle path is moving around an arc. That's what I'm working on. Uh, I've done a lot of background on this. I've done a lot of struggle on this. And so I'm very positive this is the right direction for me to go. How about you? What are you working on right now? And how confident are you that it's the right way to go and why? Do you have layers in your swing? Answer some of these questions down below and let's discuss. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm Steve. As usual, I'll either see you in the next video or I'll see you longer and straighter down the fairway. Everybody take good care.